Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham here with Think Tech Tech Talks today. I'm sitting in for Jay Fidel. Uh, he's off island, and so I have the privilege of interviewing today's guest, which is Jamie Barnett from consumeraffairs.com. Jamie and I are going to be discussing uh, without the internet, would or would our, would our world cease to exist? That's sort of our topic today. So I, uh, I just invite you to stay tuned and, and listen to some of the uh, ideas that uh, Jamie has. Welcome to the show, Jamie. Hi, it's nice to be with you guys. It yes. would be nicer if I were there on island with you. Well, you know, we ha if it's any consolidation, we've had quite a bit of rain in the last few days, and I know that that would make you feel much better. <laughs> 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 oh, it's, rain it's raining here too. So oh, it is. Okay. Okay. Well, the weather will be the same. Next time we do the show with you, we will have you. We'll have you come to Hawaii to do the show. That sounds excellent. Okay. Yes, I will sell my company on it. <laughs> okay. Very good. Well, you know, Jamie, this issue of the internet. Um, you know, um, when uh, Jay first asked me to do the show, I was sort of thinking about all the repercussions and how much we lean on the internet today. And uh, here in Hawaii, especially because we're an island and we're sort of unattached, um, when we do business on a daily basis, we rely on the internet for a lot of the communication and transfer of information. So, um, what made you decide to do a, do an article on this topic? So, at Consumer Affairs, we like to sort of look at things that we think would interest our consumers, and mm -hmm. then find some data points about them that aren't necessarily obvious and share those. And because we are an internet company, this seems like a pretty natural fit for us to fill people in about how we use the internet and what happens when we don't have it. Well, a lot of us are affected. You know, one of the things that we look at the internet today is our business models are, are reliant on the internet. But, you know, the internet is also this amazing source of revenue today. It is redefined yes. competition in the marketplace in, in so many ways. Uh, that, uh, and technology, of course, is eating everything. It doesn't really matter what industry you're in. So, um, we, but when we talk about, when we talk about, uh, when we talk about the loss of the internet, we're not, also, we're not talking just about business. We're also talking about the social uh, dynamics associated with people not having access to the internet. And I think a lot yeah, of the things that you wrote about in your article related to that. Yeah, absolutely. We do think about business transactions, mm -hmm. and that certainly is something that is very scary when the internet goes down. Um, you can't use your debit card necessarily, or even go to the ATM and get cash. Uh, so in that way, as consumers, it's very concerning not to have the internet. Um, businesses lose a lot of money when they don't have access to the internet. Mm -hmm. But on just a more personal level, we've become so much more reliant on it as a way to communicate with one another. Um, you know, now on Facebook, we see these messages come up if someone is in an area that's been affected by a natural disaster or some sort of terrorist attack. Facebook can ask people who are in the area, are you safe? Mm. And then they can respond. Everyone will, you know, that they know will instantly know they're okay. Um, that's not something that we had the option to do even five years ago. Well, and we just had nine, you know, uh, the 15th anniversary for 9-11, and, um, yeah. you know, people were frantic at that point. You know, they were trying to call loved ones to find out where they were. They were, mm -hmm. you know, the system became overwhelmed. Texting was the only way to communicate, uh, which, of course, is yeah. heavily Internet-reliant. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I can see that as, a, as an interesting scenario. And, um, you know, of course, now we have some very other very interesting things going on. We have um, Kim, Sung, or Kim, Jong, Kim Jong Un, for example, the, the new uh, leader of, uh, of Korea. And um, here's somebody who has nuclear warheads. Well, if one of those nuclear, heads were to go, nuclear warheads were to go off, even close to, to us, the impact yeah. on our Internet uh, and uh, all the systems that are that utilize or rely on the internet would probably fail. Um, even if nobody, yeah. there was no, nobody harmed physically because maybe we shot mm -hmm. it down, but it exploded in, you know, up, up in the uh, upper atmosphere. Um, that sends out a shock wave that would, we could imagine would damage a lot of our satellite systems. So yeah, yeah. A, quite, quite a fascinating and topic. 
even um, when we think about, I think when we think about the Internet, at least my mind instantly goes more to being able to send an email or get on social media. But increasingly, even our traditional landlines require, you know, they run on fiber optic networks Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. voice over Internet protocols. And so that is, you know, you think, well, you can just go home and plug in your, you know, old phone and pick it up and be able to call 911. But if you've been without power for several days, that might not be the case. So when we think about those sort of disasters, it's not just the Internet that gets knocked out. But if the power gets knocked out, the Internet goes with it. Yeah. Which is... Um, it doesn't matter how well your, your phone holds a charge. It's still not right, going to work very yeah. well for you. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, you know, nothing to be done. Um, so increasingly, I mean, the fiber optic technology is amazing and it gives us so, it gives us a stronger connection and a faster connection and we can send more information. Mm-hmm. But um, it also, some of the, you know, the old copper lines could carry energy with them. So when those, now when we lose power, we also lose all communication. If it's, if the power is out for too long. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Of course, then that means we have to start talking to one another face to face. Yes, we yes. absolutely, absolutely need to. Um, I think that because we can remain connected to our family of origin or our very close friends, when we go out into the world, we don't necessarily make as many connections. We're playing with our phones when we're on an elevator. We're not talking to our neighbors that just moved in across the hall. Um, and it's, if we lose the Internet, it's going to be those people who are immediately around us that, uh, that we would rely on. So sure. just the way we interact. Well, one of the uh, things that's interesting, too, you know, I, and I'm a, a parent, and I have two daughters uh, that I raised, <laughs> and I raised them while, in the, while they had cell phones, and... Um, they were very cell phone reliant, and I noticed that their personalities changed. Once I got them hiking, like we would go out or we go hiking and get them away from technology, they would turn into human beings again, which was an amazing um, transformation. And uh, I don't know, I would sort of put a plug out there for parents who find themselves dealing with, with sassy, bratty teenagers. Maybe you should take, uh, take your kids for a hike, and you'd be surprised at uh, the, uh, the, the change or the... Uh, the shift in, um, in, the, in the way they communicate with you and they communicate with each other. Yeah, well, one of the things that we found in looking at our research was that when people put down their devices, um, mm-hmm. their style of communication with one another instantly changes. They are talking about topics that are more thoughtful and in-depth. They're mm-hmm. using longer sentences. And then over time, so... Um, Our study looked at kids who were at a camp where no technology was allowed Mm -hmm. for five days, um, as opposed to just general, the general, you know, average kid who's using their phone all the time. And the kids who would not have technology for that long were better at able, they were better able to read facial expressions and to pick up on body language clues about what was going on with a person. Uh-huh. So I noticed that's that, something. yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. I mean, being able to pick up uh, visual cues, and that's actually mm-hmm. um, a huge, huge part of communication. Uh, I think yeah, there was, uh, it is. There was several books written. I think one was called uh, "Had to Do with Neuro uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming," where they uh, help people develop a heightened sense of visual cues from facial expressions and body language, and uh, yeah, so. Those are, of course, important tools in communication today. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's easier for, you know, you said that your kids can be human again. Well, yeah. if they're paying attention to body language, then they're going to be much better able to respond to what's going on with you um, or, you know, with their parents. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Of course, I could always read their body language because when I would talk to them, they would they would look up at the ceiling, cross their arms, and, and wait for the, the lecture to end. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, so they, they, uh, I got their visual, visual cues, cues quite clearly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, but um, let's talk about some other repercussions from the Internet. Um, 
Um, you know, we talk about how it, would, it, would it affect our national security? Um, is there dialogue about that? Yeah, there's a lot of dialogue about that. And the FCC has a couple of groups that are devoted to, not necessarily not devoted to national security, but devoted to looking at the way our telecommunication systems operate. Mm -hmm. and how secure they are and so they they actually it's the um no it is the communication security reliability and inoperability council that's a mouthful wow but they just had their last meeting of this current council group a couple of days ago on wednesday and came forward with a bunch of recommendations for things we need to be doing. And their reports, their written reports aren't out yet. I've only had time to watch a few of the um, working group interviews. Um, but when they last met, one of the big things that they talked about was the need for telecommunications companies to have some sort of agreement to work together during national disasters of all kinds, including national security issues mm. um, and have so that people can still communicate. Well, we're going to take a, a short uh, commercial break. Um, I'm going to go okay. home and get two cans and a string and we'll be right back uh, right here with Think Tech Hawaii. Stay tuned for more. Aloha. Hello, I'm Patrick Bratton. Please join me every Thursday at 1 o'clock for Global Connections where I talk to a variety of guests and range through many issues from contemporary, international, political events, things talking about national security, um, all sorts of international issues, and also more local issues, history, and so on. I look forward to having you join me and talking with some of my guests. Thank you. I pity the fool who ain't watching this show at 12 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Stan, the energy man, watch it. And Welcome to Asia in the Wheel. Looking forward to see you next month on October 13, Thursday at 11 o'clock. We just had a great show here on Global Connections with Masi Ganjali talking about building bridges through the arts. Masi, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having How me. How did you find our time here? Oh, it's lovely. Uh, I really enjoy your programs that, uh, you know, oh God, this is so hard. <laughs> Hi, and we're back. Hi, this is Chris Leetham with Think Tech Hawaii with Tech, Tech Talks here. Uh, that's a little bit of a tongue twister for me today, but I, I think I figured it out. Um, we are talking to Jamie Barnett from ConsumerAffairs.com. Uh, Jamie uh, recently wrote an article on uh, without the internet, what would the, would the world cease to exist? And uh, Jamie, we were just talking a little bit about uh, some of the sort of the weird and wonderful things that uh, you, were, you were mentioning with the, the telephone companies now uh, being sort of... Uh, prodded to negotiate and work out uh, ways to communicate with each other in case the internet were to fail. Um, and we were talking yeah. about national security as well. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any, is there any, any other organizations out there addressing this issue? Um, the FCC is doing a lot with it. Homeland Security is working with them mm -hmm. to do that as well. There are some areas where there's no clear person who would be in charge of something like this. Um, so there are undersea cables that carry, you know, 99% of the traffic between continents um, or to islands. Uh -huh. And those, um, one of the FCC's working groups found that there's, because of so many different groups involved, the federal government, even for cables that fall inside American territory, there's no one person that is in charge, one group that's in charge of monitoring those. Uh -huh. Well, there, a lot so, of these are commercial or private, private, and some of them belong to the military, which of course, um, you know, one of the things is we don't want people to know where these cables are, right? Yes. I mean, yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. a secret because we don't want anybody coming in with uh, a hook or something coming in and trying to dredge up a cable and then maybe... Um, using that as a form of piracy, you know, we've we've mm -hmm. we've got your 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 cable, and uh, we're going to hold it a hostage. 
um, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, it's certainly a security issue yeah. that they have to keep the sites where the cables sort of come aground very mm-hmm. secret, and they can't put exact cable locations on maps. So that's sort of a double-edged, they can't, yeah, the exact location, sort of a double-edged sword. Right. So somebody knows, but we're not telling. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So there are general areas where, you know, boats aren't supposed to sort of dredge things along and fish or drop anchor. But uh-huh. without ha- knowing exactly where those are, sometimes there are problems. Yeah, and you could just accidentally, accidentally you could, damaging That's them. right. You could accidentally pick up a cable if you weren't paying attention or, you know, mm-hmm. because you don't know exactly where they are if you're down there right. um, running a side sweep sonar because you're doing an investigation in the area. It's, it's quite possible that while you're dragging one of those behind, you could hook, you could hook one of these cables. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's, it's a double-edged sword of mm-hmm. how do we keep us safe and how do we also prevent accidents from happening that would wipe out, um, you know, a lot of communication mm-hmm. between countries. Well, and the thing is with the Internet, too, you know, uh, a more realistic sort of scenario probably uh, and a more common scenario is that you have partial loss of Internet access, right? I mean... So maybe the systems go down. Could be a power outage. Could be something, you know, gets blown up. Who knows? Uh, but partial or a, a partial loss of the internet. I'm I'm supposing that there's a lot of redundancy that's built into the way the internet operates. Yeah. Um, you know, I was surprised once I started thinking about the internet going down mm-hmm. that. Although there is a lot of redundancy, there's probably not as much as makes me feel really safe. Mm. Um, so, because a lot of a lot of the redundancies also rely on the power grid. So, if we lose power, then all of the redundancies fail. And there's also a lot of sort of patchwork of our system that, um, because that was sort of how it was financially feasible to build these things up. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the internet's grown at such a rapid rate that our technology hasn't necessarily been able to keep up with the demand. Interesting, interesting. So partial loss is certainly a problem. I think of the Delta power outage um, a couple of months ago. You know, they lost power for about six hours. Mm-hmm. That meant their data center went down. People were stranded all over the world because no Delta flights could take off. Um, but oh. Delta was the only... So they were the only company in their area that lost power. So there was a lot of like, well, it was the power company from Delta, and the power company was saying, no, no, it was Delta. Ah. Uh, so that yeah, tells so Delta just, that they need to have redundant power systems in place and not be yes. not be reliant on a sole power provider. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that they do. I didn't follow that story closely mm-hmm. sort of after it developed, but, I mean, it, it caused a lot of chaos. And so that was a case where even one small hiccup for one company had a lot of effects all over the world for travelers. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. So now, um, with all of these systems and the more, the, the more companies lean on the Internet, I guess the proclivity for failure would get higher. Um, so uh, where should, what, what, what other things should we be doing? Should we be doing anything strategically or tactically to, to ensure that uh, we don't have uh, failure, uh, total failure of the Internet? Well, as consumers, there's not a lot we can do to make sure the Internet just doesn't go out. Mm-hmm. Um, we can prepare for the case of that by, you know, doing things like keeping some cash on hand. Um, in case there's a problem with your debit card or your credit cards are being declined because of a, an error thousands of miles from you. Yeah, that's a thought. Um, and that's, a real, that's, a, that's an yeah. interesting thought because if we were to, to lose access to the, the ability to process payments, of course, banks today mm-hmm. don't carry as much cash on hand as they used to because they don't right. need to. And if yeah. you needed to go and get money out of the bank, and, of course, then there, there is a pro- possibility with the loss of the Internet that there would be a run on the bank for cash. And, yeah, I uh, think that that is a problem. That's um, a, and even, you know, ATMs, you couldn't use your debit card to get money out of the ATM because that relies on the Internet. Mm-hmm. So, so I think that is something that is a good thing to think about, um, keeping some cash on hand, uh-huh. some extra batteries. 
and the like crank radium so that if there's a weather emergency you're still getting alerts about that yeah that's true i would i would prefer a pedal radio myself oh like okay pedal yes, of, yeah yeah right. so, but this, if i could find up that, to a bicycle yeah, <laughs> that's right i'll get up to the bicycle and just just crank, keep that radio going. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, but then of course, uh, we still have to have broadcasting, and I guess we would rely on older technologies such as broadcasting. We'd rely on older technologies such maybe there would still be some POTS lines that would still be working. Maybe we still have some of the older switchboard technology around. Um, but, yeah. you know, um, certainly that would put a, there would be a, a huge push to resolve whatever issue caused the internet to go down. If it were to go down for a sustained mm -hmm. period of time, we would have to make some serious adjustments to the to uh, our economy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's something that I'm not sure how we would do. It would certainly lead to a period of chaos, mm -hmm. I think, um, if it were to go down and not come back up. And you know, we're all used for all those people out there the that idea. are attached to dating sites. They're going to have to meet people the old-fashioned way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, everything we've gotten used to, it would mm -hmm. just be fun. Yes, yes. You'd actually have to know how to go up and approach somebody and introduce yourself and, uh, and make conversation. Uh, in yeah. some ways, it may not be a bad thing, you know. No, I think what um, we found in talking to people was that a lot of people actually said they sort of wished they could go somewhere that they were not connected. Um, so about more than half, about 60% of the people we interviewed said they would love to travel to a place without any internet connection. Do you think they would take their phones? You know, I think they would. I think, <laughs> I think we they would so used to having them. <laughs> yes. I just, I don't think we are willing to give them up. And... Um, thinking sort of about Homeland Security, again, this is, there are, you know, some colleges that are referring to today's college-age students as the Homeland Generation. Mm. Um, these are kids that were very young on September 11th. They've come of age where they're always connected, mm -hmm. and we're in a 24-hour news cycle. They can easily find out what the terror-level alert is, if it's like orange or yellow. And don't um, forget, don't forget, we would have to go back to using maps to find stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yes. I can't oh, even... I would be terrible. I'd be lost forever. Yeah, yeah. We would sort of, uh, us older folks would have an advantage over our teenagers because we know how to get somewhere and be able to read a map and look at it and know how to get from point A to point B. So that would that probably, yeah, true. that would be an interesting impact. And the psychological impact of being disconnected when yes. you've lived your whole life being connected to the Internet. Yes. Um, the withdrawals, yes. I think they would create a whole new uh, uh, kind of uh, psychological practice for, um, for psychologists and psychiatrists. Yeah, and just, I think that that psych psychological fear is why so many people wouldn't give up their phones even if, they said, oh, yeah, I want to travel to a place without internet connection. Yeah, yeah. And then um, you can imagine if the internet didn't work and the phone didn't work, they'd probably still clutch the phone just just, <laughs> yeah. just in case it's, at some point it actually comes know, back on again. Yeah, A modern security blanket for yeah, us. Yeah, that's true. I, in fact, I'm sort of kind of surprised people haven't started embedding their phones inside their teddy bears, you know, and things like that. Right. So, yeah, uh, it's yeah, a very it's, interesting topic. It really is. Uh, just to think about how much has changed mm -hmm. and the way that we've become reliant on things that did not exist at all 30 years ago. It's, it's quite Or at amazing. least not for the average American. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, Jamie, I want to thank you so much. Um, and we hope to see you here in Honolulu next time we talk about uh, the loss of the Internet and our digital dependence that we have today. Um, and um, uh, thank you very much for joining us here at Think Tech Hawaii on uh, Think Tech Talk, on uh, Think Tech Tech Talks. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great, great to chat with you. Thank you. Aloha, everybody. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham, and hopefully next week uh, Jay Fidel will be back here at uh, his usual chair here at Think Tech Hawaii, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Aloha. <laughs>